Among the bread and butter factions of Sea of Thieves, none feel as abandoned as the older souls. Athena's fortune got the legend of the veil, merchants got absolutely busted money laundering schemes, and gold hoarders got the votes of the ancients. Older souls, meanwhile, go hunt down some skeletons like it's day one of release. This just isn't fair! While all the other factions are out there making bank and having awesome voyages, the best thing our skelly loving hippies get is a flame heart ripoff. Yeah, thanks for that, Rare. Though being the neglected middle child of the family does have its benefits. When Birdie and I decided to explore the breadth of activities available to the Order, we ended up learning just how differently pirates treat you when you fly that flag. I mean, how often do you end up with a private band on your sloop, but I am getting ahead of myself. Our journey began, as all of them do, at an outpost. Birdie and I were trying to pick out a few voyages to attempt, but the selection we got was not to our liking. The Order of Souls kept trying to send us east, and with the Devil's Roar in that direction, we were trying to avoid that at all cost. With the game refusing to give us an eastern destination, we decided to set sail on our own to try our luck at a different outpost. By the way, because a lot of people in the comment section seem confused about this, the reason you keep seeing the same names in my videos, as well as videos from other creators, is because of the replace gamer tag feature. If you see somebody still confused about that, please do me a favor and enlighten them about this setting. Anyway, on our way to the next outpost, we spotted an Athena storm off in the distance. Needless to say that these people probably had a lot more fun than us, but that was about to change. So you know how different skulls in the sky indicate a world event? It just so happened that a skull fort had spawned on our way to Sanctuary Outpost. And with this particular event being incredibly outdated, I'm talking like day one of release kind of outdated, I figured I could handle this on my own while Birdie left to buy a few new voyages. I was trying to do ye oldies, set them on fire and play Ring Around the Rosy Strat, but Rare was not having any of it. If I tried to cheese the whole event, then they responded in kind, spawning gunpowder keg skeletons to make that strategy a lot more dangerous. But at least I didn't have a player galleon come my way, which is exactly what happened to Birdie. While I was out here fighting skellies, Birdie got rolled up on by a French rank 5 Athena galleon. Probably the same guys who did the veil we saw earlier, but why does it matter that they are French? Well... Uh, no, monsieur. Do I come, do I come for what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Yeah, no kill, no kill. Now, both Birdie and I are bilingual, but neither of us had a decent grasp of the French language, a language that Birdie is confident in, however, is Spanish. Uh, hablo espanol? Okay, uh, oh, poco espanol. I have no idea what the f this guy's saying, Cliff. <laughs> Maybe confident is the wrong word? When Birdie confronted our French galleon captain with the Spanish language, he found out that this dude was so incredibly fluent that he talked way too fast for him to be understood. Though eventually, the two of them had exchanged enough gibberish to conclude that Birdie was not a threat, and as such, we were recruited to an alliance? I mean, hey, Beat's getting sunk, so I'm not complaining. What I'm also not complaining about is them immediately starting to sell a bunch of loot while we had been almost an hour into our voyage without a single skull to our name. Which doesn't mean that I wasn't hard at work, I was, but despite this for being an incredibly outdated piece of content, luck was not on my side as every single wife of Skellies featured at least one gunpowder barrel, making my ring around the rosy strat a lot more dangerous. And what had to happen did eventually happen, I flew too close to the sun, which of course meant that I got burned. Well, I guess it's time to see what Birdie has been up to. Hey Cliff. Hmm? One of them is tucking in our crow's nest. Seriously? Yes. He probably thinks I'm just stupid and didn't notice him, but no, I definitely did. Now that's interesting. In my, albeit the limited time on the seas, I hadn't ever been tucked on. So it was interesting that it had happened now of all times with us running the Order of Souls Emissary. Coincidence? Probably, but I decided to leave the guy for now. I returned to Hidden Spring Keep to continue bashing my head against the gunpowder skelly wall of this fort while Birdie went north to solo the Phantom Fleet voyage he purchased. And because there's no end to my suffering, I got stuck on a wooden pole as I tried to get away from said gunpowder skelly. Oh. Not again, not again, not again! Oh my god! Yeah, you wouldn't think that I play this game for a living, but back to the lab we go. Though for once, it wasn't my own incompetence that halted progression. A random brigantine had appeared out of nowhere and seemed to be chasing Birdie. I was torn between murmuring back to the ship and staying here to use the cannon towers once our sloop had circled back around. But as if our voyage hadn't been weird enough already, more odd things continue to happen. Are they anchored? What? They sunk! The brig? Yeah, I have a lot of questions. Hey, so are you part of that brigantine or...? Cause like, their ship sank. Hey, what's up? Oh, you're in our alliance! Oh! <laughs> I'm a little bit confused there for a second, alright. Love you! <laughs> Fun! 
<laughs> These guys are so weird. I love it. <laughs> Our French buddies apparently decided to go for the most elaborate vibe check in Sea of Thieves history. We were plenty amused, but alas, our ship was still completely devoid of any treasure. Hoping to not get interrupted this time, Birdie shot me off towards the Skull Fort again before leaving to clear the Ghost Fleet for real this time. I was confident I could finish this encounter off without dying again because at long last I had reached the final wave. The only thing standing between me and the opening of the vault was a single boss. As long as I don't get too close to him, this should be an easy fight. I delivered the final blow just as nighttime broke. Birdie had been awfully quiet for the last few minutes, so I assumed he was trying to focus while clearing the fleet. My job now was to organize the loot to make sure we could pick it up swiftly once he had completed this mission. I can definitely see why nobody's bothering with these skull forts anymore. It most assuredly did not feel like it was worth the time compared to any of the more recent forts that have been added to the game. At least it was easy enough to solo, minus my little blunders. Though speaking of solo, Birdie had finally broken his silence. Cliff, I need your help. Immediately? That's the Kelly ship, just spawned. Oh god, I'm coming. Are they about to ram us? You're joking. They're actually gonna ram us, what the hell? What? I can see why you needed my help. Oh my god, we're taking on so much water. Are you gonna be fine? Uh, yeah, I think so. We're good. It's funny how taking on an entire fleet of ghost ships is absolutely no problem, but as soon as a single skelly sloop arrives, things get dicey. Not only are skeletons a lot more accurate and aggressive than phantoms, but if you're solo slooping, a single cursed cannonball from these suckers can be the end of your voyage. A funny tidbit is that phantoms and skeletons do attack each other. However, we were not so sure about that brigantine that decided to come back. Any attempt to communicate with them fell on deaf ears, making me fear the worst. But we didn't have time for them. We had to get rid of that skelly ship before the fleet got in position to absolutely decimate us. Though in an ironic twist of fate, whether intentional or not, that brigantine had grabbed the attention of the fleet, giving us time to reset and even a chance to grab some loot. Wait, why was there any loot in the first place? Turns out that brigantine had sunk because of the encounter that we summoned and they were now trying to reclaim their loot to put it on a rowboat. Feeling a bit responsible for their misfortune, I checked on them to ask if they needed help and while they declined initially, they did change their mind and ask to be picked up. With the three of them on our humble vessel, I offered to hold onto their Robot until they came back with a ship, but they didn't want it. They just wanted to help. These lads repaired the ship while we were fighting. They were cooking food to make sure we are fed, and they even played music for our entertainment. I mean, sure, one of them vomited in my face after a hearty meal of worms, but that was forgiven in light of the sheer silliness born out of having five people on a sloop. When we finished the encounter, they thanked us for our help despite them doing all the work. And after dropping their loot on our ship, they roboted away into the night like the absolute giga chats that they are. I could couldn't help but feel like something about that Order of Souls flag was special. Not only did nobody expect us to be dangerous, but it's almost like they felt bad for us. Being the only main faction in Sea of Thieves that hasn't gotten any new content in many moons really does have its benefits. For now, Birdie decided to take a little bathroom break while I returned to the skull for to claim the loot I had secured. Obviously, there was still a bunch left at the vault since I had to cut my sorting agenda short, but everything was still there ready to be picked up. But let's not forget that only because the other players on the server weren't messing with us, doesn't mean that Rare wouldn't. I was fairly certain that Skelly Galleon was just a random patrol, and so long that you don't attack them first, they won't be hostile towards you either. Unfortunately, Birdie was not aware of that when he returned from his bathroom Hello. break. Hey, there's a Skelly Galleon right next to us. Pog! I'm not sure if they're aggro. Oh. This was a fine mess Birdie had gotten us into, one that he was determined to fix. Using the Stronghold Gunpowder Barrel from the Skull Fort, Birdie swam over to the ship to blow it up from inside. In my mind, there was no way they could survive that, so I moved our ship forward to grab the rest of the loot that I had placed on a nearby rock. But guess what? The Skelly Galleon was still up! It kept relentlessly firing into me, and because Birdie has more determination than brain cells, rather than helping me fight back, he took it upon himself to bring another keg! Because you know, that worked out so well the first time around. In a perhaps unsurprising twist, by now, it took our French galleon friends to come over and help us in order to avoid sinking, at which point I not only questioned our general level of competence, but also why everybody was so freaking nice to us. The only thing they wanted was for us to kill one of them so they get the pink flame from the ferry. Not because they wanted to use it for any particular reason, they just thought it looked cool. My god, these guys are such absolute chads. With all these ghost and skelly ships we had to fight, our supplies were dangerously low, so Birdie and I decided to go clear a sea fort in order to stock up. And while we were doing that, we 
noticed that our friends had still been keeping a watchful eye over us, even going as far as to send one of them over to help us load the treasure onto our ship before disappearing once more. The perceptive among you may have noticed that we had been several hours into our session and yet we only completed a single Order of Souls voyage. And there is a reason for that. They suck. The whole going to an island to fight skeletons thing is not only a lot of work for very little reward, but the bigger the island, the more time it takes to find these freaking things in the first place. All we got from defeating several waves of skeletons was a singular hateful bounty skill. No follow-up quest, no skeleton orders, nothing. Really makes you feel like it's day one of release again. We figured that completing world events was probably more worth it than spamming these voyages, but as we were heading for our next destination, we spotted a Reaper Emissary. It seemed like our alliance partners had gotten themselves in a bit of a squabble with a reaper. Naturally, their Athena 5 emissary flag would attract such PvP hungry opposition, and with them having helped us so much already, Birdie and I made way towards them to return the favor. Their ship had been stationed at Wanderer's Refuge, I sent Birdie over to flex his Spanish once more, but when I heard him speak in plain English, curiosity had gotten the better of me. Oh, you're making a trap for them! Yes, three of my mates are there, waiting for him to... Oh! to go sell, so don't worry about it. Man, now I feel kind of stupid for even assuming they would need our help. These guys already had the whole thing figured out. He told us that should they need our help, they will raise their PvP flag so we can see it on the map. Though that never ended up happening because literally as we were leaving to head over to the Ashen Winds event... Oh, they sunk them! <laughs> already? Yes! Wait a second, wait, I gotta see this, I gotta see this, hold up. No shot, they sunk them already! There's These such giga chance! <laughs> It was official, we were under the protection of the strongest crew on the entire server. Knowing there was nobody who could stop us, Birdie and I felt empowered to take on every world event we can find. We learned that taking out Skelly Galleons is a lot easier with two people on the ship. Shocking, I know. Before deciding to split our attention, because the Ashen Winds event is actually easier to complete solo, I sent Birdie off to a neighboring sea fort to kill some time for additional supplies and treasure. For those of you wondering why I made the bold claim that Ashen Winds is easier to complete on your own after dying repeatedly, repeatedly on a skull fort, the answer to that is fairly simple. Control. The Ashen Winds boss only has a few very predictable moves, and with it repeatedly spawning minions for you to take out, it's a lot easier to line them up for an easy sword dash kill when they all come towards you instead of running around between different players. I brought a storage crate with a bunch of good food to tank their damage, and then kited the boss next to an ammo crate so that I could refill my blunderbuss. From there on out, all I have to do is dash around to take care of the minions before laying into the boss. About 10 minutes and loads of point blank blundy shots later, the boss was defeated and the loot was mine. Ashen Winds was a particularly good world event for our faction because it drops the most valuable skull in the entire game, but of course I'd be remiss not to collect all the loot strewn about after the encounter. And this really was the golden hour of our voyage, because once we realized that nobody could stand in our way, we went across the entire map to defeat any world event and skelly ship we saw in order to collect more and more skulls. Sure, there was another Reaper Emissary on the sea, but if they wanted to sink us, they would have to take it up with our whole alliance, who was currently selling a bunch of- wait a second, they're selling? That's not good. The selling of loot usually marks the end of many a voyage, and as we were farming skelly ships for more loot, our greatest fear had become reality. The French Giga Chats logged off. You see, the reason we've been holding onto all of this loot despite our flag long since having leveled up to the maximum rank 5 was because we saved it for gold rush hour. We felt confident in sailing around as a loot pinata because of our alliance, but with them gone, Birdie and I decided to head on over to the Devil's Roar to be as far away from the Reapers as possible, but because we had 40 more minutes to go before Gold Rush Hour began, we made the horrible decision to pick up some voyages. The Devil's Roar is usually a great destination to do Order of Souls voyages because the environment pretty much kills the skeletons for you, but that also means that said environment will try to kill you. Hey, are you gonna stay? Um... Well... Respawn, respawn, respawn fast. Yep, that's why we wanted to avoid the Devil's War. A single random volcano is all it takes to ruin hours upon hours of work. As I said before, only because players weren't getting in our way does not mean Rare had any intention to spare us. But if you want to see a video in which we did get to cash in our loot, what about you check out my last episode in which our crew forcefully recruited an entire server into our alliance during community day. You can find a card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea and until next time, peace!